All right, good morning. My name is Chantel Carr. I'm coordinator of military advisement here at Rio Salado College. Um, we handle active duty veterans, um, voc rehab, VRAP students. So anyone that's had any type of military affiliation, they come through our office or should come through our office. Who we serve, um, active duty military members, dependents, um, retirees, all branches, reservists, guardsmen, civilian students um, enrolled at Luke Air Force Base, and friendly foreign nation military members and dependents um, through, the airport, uh, through the Air Force at the Republic of Singapore. <clears throat> How we serve them, um, routine um, admissions and records services, testing services, academic advisement, transcript evaluations, student agreement forms, general advisement, AI portal for the Air Force, Go Army Ed for the Army, um, on-base recruiting activities, and also Go Army Ed uh, registration. As you, if you all watch the news, you know, due to sequestration, the military has temporarily suspended all active duty TA, so, Generally speaking, when a service member is active duty, they receive $4,500 a year to go towards their uh, schooling. So tuition, books, education, they receive that. But because of the sequestration, they have suspended that, that's, um, that perk or that benefit to the service member. GI Bill, they're still um, eligible for their GI Bill if they've paid into the GI Bill but that's an option for them if they would like to continue taking classes while they're active duty. What you should know about Rio at Luke Air Force Base, we do have a presence on Luke Air Force Base. We've been out there for quite some time now. We offer in-person accelerated courses there. Um, there is restricted access to Luke Air Force Base. You have to pass a security clearance and you have to get a pass um, to get on and off base. So if pe civilian students can take Courses, the accelerated courses at Luke Air Force Base, but again, they have to go through the security clearance. Um, no proctoring fees for CLEP test and Dante's. Um, also out at Luke Air Force Base, they're a national testing center, which means when students come from wherever they come from, they are able to proctor tests wherever, wherever the, the student is bringing a test from. Um, what you should know about active duty Air Force students, they enroll in courses just like regular students. Um, they apply for their tuition assistance online using the gym portal. Um, and most, it, many Air Force students are trying to complete a CCAF, which is the Community College of, Air, of the Air Force. So out of all five branches of service, the, community or the Air Force is the only branch of service that has a community college. The other four branches, they, their military training is evaluated by ACE, and then institutions can award credit if they do accept the ACE recommendation. Please refer active duty military students and also veterans, to say veterans as well, VRAP students, um, to the military advisement department. There's our, there's our contact information. Um, we're, we're located on the third floor at the main tower here at Rio. And if you have any veterans or active duty military students, please send them our way. Um, our phone number, our phone numbers is listed there and as well as the website for the department. Are there any questions? No questions? All right, thank you very much. My name is Terry Farah, and I'm the Disability Services Manager here, and Gabby Gussie is the Disability Assistant, so if you see either one of us and you have questions about disability services, and if you have questions along the way with the presentation, please feel free to ask, because I know there's a lot of information. Um, the main thing that we tell everyone is refer, refer, refer. Don't try and answer uh, questions about disability services. So. We're here, we're available, and um, here's our number. We have one number for disability services. And we provide accommodations for all students with documented disabilities. They must have a document, uh, documented disability. And we also work with students to promote you know, self-advocacy, self-responsibility, and so that they can be successful in their classes because they do have a lot of challenges. Some have a lot, some don't have as many but um, that's what our department is there for. 
We, um, we do provide accommodations, as I said. We have around 500 students at this time that, that come through our department. And most, well, I would say every student receives testing accommodations of some sort. Because in order to uh, register with disability services, they have to have some type of disability. And whether it's physical, mental, um, no matter what the disability is, they usually can get testing accommodations. And that's for in person as well as at home exams and quizzes. So I just named a few here, extended test taking time, testing in a private room. Some might need a reader, a scribe, if a student is visually impaired, for instance, or has a learning disability. So the scribe is to write and the reader obviously to read. We give text in alternative format. Uh, we order that from the publisher. Students um, purchase their book and then we order it in, in e-format and then they have some type of assistive technology which allows the, their screen reader, it's called a screen reader, to read back to them. And then we have sign language interpreters, but because we are an online college, we don't have as many as most colleges do, but we have things like master teacher seminars, and sometimes there are issues, and I'll, I'll get into this in a minute, uh, certain circumstances where they might need a um, sign language interpreter. And of course, we, we offer many other accommodations, but I just wanted to give you some general ones here. Uh, we do provide the accommodations under ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and the amendment to the act in 2008, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act Amendment Act. Um, and here are some examples of disabilities. There's, you know, physical hearing and visually impaired, quadriplegic, and that includes um, birth anomalies and spinal cord injuries, and then there are diabetes and epilepsy, and then traumatic, tra excuse me, traumatic brain injury, which can also cause physical, but also mental concerns. And we get a lot of our veterans coming back from the war with traumatic brain injury, and um, we do what we can. Some of them don't even want to tell us that they have that type of, of disability, but in order to get services, everyone has to provide the documentation and has, has to go through and have a file set up, and we do need to, to do that in order to give them accommodations. Then, of course, there's mental and emotional. There are people with severe mental illness, such as um, schizophrenia, bipolar, um, and depression, and then there are all levels of that. Clinical depression, maybe people that have um, anxiety when they're testing, or they may have general anxiety disorder where they're in a, a crowd of people. So there's, there's a spectrum within each one of those that incorporates those students with disabilities. And then, of course, post-traumatic stress disorder, which, again, um, can happen not only to the, the military and the vets, but also people that have had you know, traumatic things happen in their life where they, they have post-traumatic stress disorder as well. A lot of people think that it's just you know, in war and that, but people that have had very very serious things happen to them. They, they also have that. And then, of course, the learning disability spectrum is huge because it will incorporate any, you know, ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, their reading and processing problems, writing problems. There, there, there is only one component. Uh, we have students calling our office that says, English is my second language. And, you know, that means I have a learning disability. That is not considered a disability. That is an this is kind of the, the, the saying that we use, an, an inability is not a disability. So they do not, they're not able to register with disability services. It has to be a disability under ADA. So um, we, we have a lot of disappointed students, but there's not a lot we can, we can do in that area. Then there are ones that are temporary. Women that have a risky pregnancy, not a normal pregnancy. A normal pregnancy is not considered a disability, but if they're bedridden, something to that effect, then that's considered a temporary disability. Injury from a car accident, people that have um, carpal tunnel, there's, all, there's a very large variety because people that have surgery and then they're fine, but what they do is they have to register as, a temporary, as having a temporary disability. Maybe we'll give them accommodations for a semester or two, and then after that point, they have to um, not re-register, but they have to give us updated documentation if they want um, still to have services. And our customers, well, students obviously, they're our number one customer. But along with that, we work with instructors and uh, faculty chairs. So with the instructors, 
we send them a notification of what the student's accommodations are. They allow for extensions. We do the testing part on our end, so we make all the arrangements. We just let the instructor know that if a student is taking an in-person exam and they get extended time, it's not done online, so they have to wait for the test to come from the testing center. So that's why we let um, the, the, the instructors know what's going on, even though they're not actually doing anything with the tests. And then, of course, with the faculty chairs, because they have to approve special accommodations, um, not only extensions for, uh, let's say, the student has, is not able to take their test for two weeks because of an extenuating circumstance. The instructor may not be able to approve that, so we have to go to the faculty chair. Anytime a student wants to take exam notes into their exams, those have to be approved through the faculty chairs, not the instructors. We have to get special permission, and it's very rare that that happens. The documentation has to support that, and it depends on the department as well. So all of those type of things, exam resets, additional extensions on the class itself, those all go through the department chair. And then I work, we work very close to counseling, the counseling department. We do a lot of referrals to counseling, not only for personal development and emotional issues, but we also do it for uh, test anxiety skills, um, organization, uh, just acclimating into college or dealing with situation as they go. And I'm not a licensed counselor, so I do send them to our counseling department. We work, as I said, very closely with counseling. They also do student success and um, career information too. So they, we work hand in hand. It's a, it's a really good relationship. And then, of course, testing, because we set up the testing accommodations, we track the proctor's ex exams, and then if they have any special needs, um, for instance, we have a private room in our testing center that's just for disability students. Sometimes I'll get students that three want to come on the same day during the same time. So we try and find alternate ways, like putting them in the back of the testing room or maybe putting them in an office where no one's using their, their, their office at that time. So, so we work with testing a lot, too. Um, tutoring, we give special accommodations for students with transportation or communications issues. It, it's very rare because, especially with smartthinking.com, tutoring is available 24-7, but students with learning disabilities sometimes have a hard time with that, trying to work with a tutor, chat, and that. It, it just depends on the disability. So um, there, are, there are some challenges with tutoring. Also, the general staff, I just mentioned a few things here, researching student records, um, adjusting student status, discussing medical withdrawals, financial aid for SAP appeals and block calendar issues. And then administration, <laughs> of course, we have to discuss the challenging students. So ones that have either um, caused other problems you know, within the school or they are having an issue that just can't be resolved at, at our level, then we go to the deans or the VPs to, to make decisions. We have had students who have, have, been, have threatened themselves or other people, so that's, we take it to the, I don't, that, that does not stay in my department, so. And then also with community agencies, um, vocational rehabilitation, Magellan Services, uh, Voc Rehab is, it, I don't know if you know, but they help students, uh, help people get into the work field, and the Magellan Services is for mental illness. And so they help them with medication. And um, I believe now, and, and it's changed, but um, a, lot of, a lot of their clients are access, and so they don't have their own doctors. They go to Magellan, Magellan helps them. It used to be called value options. Um, that's irrelevant. But anyway, there's a lot of different community agencies like that that we work with closely to make sure that the student is getting all of the services that they require. And um, then our partnerships, we make arrangements for accommodations no matter where the student is. So if they are taking one of our classes, let's say um, if they, well, we used to have a big uh, partnership with Motorola and we had students that were there. We provide the accommodations for the classes, US Airways, it depends. We, we provide accommodations for dual enrollment, our incarcerated students, all, all of any student that is taking a real class that has a, it, has a disability comes through our offices. So we, that's why we have so many students. And then uh, again here, dual enrollment, uh, we provide accommodations for students that are actually taking classes in high school. So uh, we work with the college counselors and the transition and resource teachers. 
And then, of course, other colleges and universities. So with the other Maricopa Community Colleges, with our sister colleges, we share documentation. They send us the documentation. We do the same with them. And then with the other colleges and universities, we do, you know, we do the same thing. They do have to request that, that all of the materials be said. But we also have issues with students who will say, could you call my advisor at ASU? Uh, in the disability office because they've been giving me this and that and or maybe we are, have given them something that ASU won't. I'm just using ASU just because it's ASU. Um, so, so we work closely with the other colleges and universities. Now we were asked to talk about a few customer astonishment things that happen in our office and to be honest with you it happens a lot because we do um, we do a lot to help our students because our students really uh, need help and uh, we do a little bit of hand holding but we do our best as I said to help them to learn to be self-advocates and be responsible for themselves but um, we had a student he was here for three years and he had Parkinson's disease he had a very hard time um, utilize well taking his tests at all but because he had tremors and he had issues with uh, being able to um, to maneuver through his exams and through some of his material that we helped him a lot. We gave him extended time. We, um, we, we really walked him through a lot. We gave him a lot of advisement on the right kinds of classes to take that would, would help him. We, as I said, we worked with him for about three years. And then he did so well that he ended up being one of the graduation student speaker candidates. And he just he was the third they, they picked two and he was the third one so we were really proud of him and he did such an awesome job that there was an article written about him and um, have it up on my desk and he mentioned my uh, the department and me that we, that and Gabby has only been here about three months. I've been doing this job for about nine years by myself. So we were give, he gave us kudos, and we were really excited. Now he's off to NAU. He's getting his BS in business. He's about just a semester away, and then he's going to go for his MBA. So we're really, really proud of him. And then um, this is a little bit of an example with the deaf student that I was saying about interpreting services, when we might need those at other times. Um, he took a communications class, and the 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 um, the class required they do an, a, a speech and they had to tape the speech and they had to use emotions and they had well he couldn't do that because he um, we in order to have an interpreter it has to be a person who we have hired through the college in order for him to be able to do his speech well. Uh, another person would not have that problem. But with a, with a deaf person, they have to be able to um, have not only an interpreter that can pick up every word, because this is his grade, but he, they also have to be able to display the correct emotions and be able to speak as he would be speaking, because he's getting graded on the speech. So because it's online, the reason why he didn't take in person, he wanted to have access you know, to it. So we are complete access. And so what he had to do is he came in and he gave his speech. We, had, we hired an interpreter and we had our video people videotape the whole thing with the interpreter. We had to download it to his class site and then, um, and then that's how he completed his speeches. So he had to come every time and it was a big ordeal and it was great. And he ended up getting an A in the class. But there are some things that we need to do that just really go above and beyond because they are unusual where another college may not deal with that type of thing. And things like if we have a student in Michigan that has a learning disability that needs a reader or scribe, we have to hire someone in order to do that. For, you know, for the, the test to have its, it, the integrity of the test, they can't bring in their friend or they can't, you know, we have to have somebody that does that. So our office does that as well. And then we had a student just recently, I just wanted to say this, he was a, a student who was in the MBA program. Um, he was getting his, uh, his degree in business at U of A. He got in a terrible car accident and he really 
is struggling, trying to just take some classes to try and get back into school because he couldn't go into his program. So we worked with his health care provider at Barrows. We worked with his mom. We worked with him. And he got through his first class. <laughs> we were really happy. Sometimes the little steps are really the important ones. And um, he <laughs> sent me, you know, a gift card to Starbucks and all of this stuff. I mean, I was like, we were so excited that he did well. But he was really, really excited and happy. So that makes us feel really good when we're really, when we know we're helping students. Sometimes we just don't know. We provide the accommodations. They go about their their work. So we just, you know, we're excited about that. So the base, I wanted to give you a little bit of a basic difference between the three areas that sometimes we, they get, we get confused. Um, the difference between disability services, advisement, and counseling. Disability services, we provide accommodations to students with documented disabilities. We refer them to the counseling and tutoring, for instance, and we're the liaison between the student and the instructor. Advisement, creates the plan of study and selects the degree path for the student, advises um, the student on which courses are appropriate for their plan, and evaluates the transcripts and explores tra uh, transfer opportunities. And then counseling works with the students with personal development and emergency referrals, and with reentry students as well. They do the jobs and career resources, and um, the college integration skills, as I said, such as test anxiety and organizational management. And sometimes we get that mixed up because a lot of students actually get that mixed up. Oh, I spoke to counseling and they really were talking to an advisor. Or I spoke to advisement and no, it was a counselor. And sometimes they call us advisement. We're not advisement. We do not do academic advising. We provide the accommodations for the students and the support for the students, but we don't do advising and we don't do counseling from our office. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, an idea. And we are located in this building, even though we serve all the sites, any Rio site there is. Uh, we are located um, on the first floor of this, oh no, of the tower. I'm sorry, where am I? <laughs> of the tower, the northwest side, when you walk in the, the main doors of the tower, on the left-hand side is Ace Puente and International Disabilities Career Counseling and the Honors Advisement. On the other side is registration. So we're on the side with, um, with all of those, you know, Ace Puente and careers. And um, you can come and see us anytime. Gabby actually is, sits on the other side right now. We're trying to find space for her. We're a little bit bit uh, landlocked in our resource area, but we will soon. But my office is there, so you're welcome to come at any time. So that's all for now. Do you have any questions? No? Well, if you have any, please feel free to call. We gave the number. Uh, now, the, this is going to be online as well, the number? Yes. Okay. All right. Posted. So please feel free to contact us. Thanks a lot. My name is Steve Moss. I'm the course materials manager here for the Real Swallow College bookstore. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of info on um, our bookstore here at the college and what sort of resources we offer and uh, where we're coming from. Now, as far as the bookstore goes, we do have textbooks, of course, but there's a whole environment of course materials, uh, including online materials um, that we use and there's a whole slew of resources here that we're going to get into. More than just a basic bookstore, we're actually a single point of contact for students, a, a transaction and delivery for all the textbooks, lab kits, digital course materials, all sorts of um, resources for our students that we can pull from over 7,000 publishers and education service providers that um, we partner with. The technology and systems that we use and the processes that we have in place are all to serve a real lot of students as best we can uh, through local in-person courses, uh, in the online courses, mobily, whether it's you know the purchasing of the uh, materials or you know the customer service are available on many different platforms there. We are managed by Follett Higher Education Group as uh, Kathy mentioned and Follett actually manages uh, campuses, campus stores uh, in the US and Canada over 900 of them 
and um, all of our campus sites together, it's about over 1,200. And we do about three billion in sales for over five million students a year. And our systems and our staff all across that board are really state-of-the-art in the industry. Uh, Follow-up is the first to market with that uh, comprehensive digital and technical solutions. We've been family-owned and operated since 1873. All of that opportunity we can bring to Real Salado, and we do on a daily basis. Uh, through the new and used textbook options, through rental uh, textbook options, that's been going for about two years. And um, on average, students save 50% off new textbook price. The textbook savings program is something that Real Salado College and Pearson Education uh, put together between the two of them, and that we kind of facilitate for them. And it's where Real Salado tailors specific textbooks um, to Real Salado's needs, and those materials as well. Uh, student saves on average about 50% of the otherwise national uh, price of the corresponding book. Uh, bundles and packages we are able to sell as well, as well as um, lab kits for the science and dental courses, chemistry, biology, their content and products created by Real Salado, different uh, departments here on campus, and for Real Salado students. All of that is available in our store and on our website. The website has that uh, convenience of 24-7 where you can get all of the required course materials, as well as all the study aids, you know, all the actual, this is what you need for your course, and this is what might help you. We sell all that through the website, as well as in the store. There's also the Real Salado merchandise, so for those students who want to show off their school spirit, and for <laughs> employees as well, sometimes we wear them in store. Uh, we got shirts, caps, leggings, sometimes if the seasons permit. And, um, and study materials, binders, papers, pencils, calculators, software. <coughs> Our website and having an actual on-campus bookstore allows us distinct advantages. Um, we're able to offer all those text formats that I mentioned with the lower pricing options. And between our website and actual store, we can accept all tender types. We do refunds for students. We can take into consideration you know, adding and dropping courses, whether they want to pick it up, have it shipped to them. And with us, they have the assurance of those right course materials at the right time coming from a single source. And that, that ease of source that the Real Salado Bookstore has comes from being integrated with the campus like no one else can be. All that to say that we're a single location, single, uh, single partner here with endless possibilities. We use solutions that align with Real Salado's course material strategy, and they will continue to. And we work with faculty to build flexible course material solutions, allowing for the speed of change and evolution of course material choices, specifically for Real Salado with you know, the ongoing courses, how they change from semester to semester, and sometimes month to month, and more often than that, and the ability to keep up with it and provide real Salado students and faculty with what they need is always what we're striving to do. We're right above us here, second floor of the conference center. Uh, our store manager is Sharon Velasco, and you can um, contact her regarding any questions. She's actually right over there. Um, yeah, I'm, my name's Steve Moss. I handle all the textbook, you know, inquiries, um, you know, for faculty, uh, research, availability, pricing, students. I handle a lot of extenuating refund circumstances, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, that should be about it, unless there's any questions. Okay, thanks so much. 
this is going to be so hard for me. Not only 10 minutes, but standing behind a podium. I'm a big talker and a big mover. So, um, though I do want everybody to just stand up and stretch for a quick second. Even if you're watching this recording on home or in your office computer, you need to stand up and stretch for a quick second. Much better, right? You're energized now. Um, in case you can't tell, that's me there on the right. Um, my name is Angela Felix. I'm the chair of languages for Rio. I've actually worked for Rio Salado College for about 19 years now. So I started when I was five. <laughs> and to my left up there is Carrie Specker. She's the chair of computer technology, and she is my present elect. I'm currently serving the fourth year on the faculty senate president, or the faculty faculty senate. I am the current faculty senate president. I was the president elect for two years. So this coming May is when we turn over. So Carrie will be the faculty senate president next year. One time I introduced myself as the college president. So every time I start the whole faculty senate president thing, I have to stop and think. Um, anyways, okay, so that's who we are. And I wanted to just show you where you can find all the rest of the faculty members on our public website. Here's a list of all the faculty members and our uh, names are linked here. So if you need to email us, you can click right on the link. We are all over at the Hohokam building. We call it the horseshoe because we have offices all around in a horseshoe. So you can find us all up there. There are 22 of us, and I would um, highly suggest that you pay attention when I emphasize something because there will be a quiz. I'm a teacher, there has to be an assessment. And there are over 1,400 adjunct faculty members that work for Rio Salado College. This picture that you see is from an article back in 2006. We were on the cover of the Chronicle of Higher Education. The title of the article was The Few, The Proud, The Professors. And what you see there is the lobby of the Hohokam building. And those of us that were around just gathered um, so that they could take that picture. But we're pretty proud of that. We have service faculty and program faculty as part of that cohort of how many? 22. We have um, three full-time librarians, a librarian chair and two additional librarians, and we also have a counseling faculty chair, along with all the program faculty that you see up there. I'm not going to name all of them, but we have general education, which is what I'm a part of. We don't actually offer a degree in languages or any of these other areas, but we are part of the general education curriculum. And then we also have program faculty that have their own certificates and degrees. And you can take a look at all these certificates and degrees that we offer on the program page. Mighty impressive, don't you think? Ooh. Ooh. And you can click on any of these to get more details about the programs that we offer. See, 10 minutes is so hard for me. I'd be making you guys getting up doing like ice breaking activities and all that kind of stuff. Um, we like to say that we're T-shaped, which means we have a strong academic core, but we also reach across and we're very interdisciplinary. Since there are only 22 of us, we can't operate in silos to get things done around the college. We have to make sure that we do interdisciplinary work and work at the college level to make sure that um, because we have that systems approach, that what we do is affecting um, other disciplines and other departments and that we take all that into account. So we like to call ourselves T-shaped. The four C's of Rio faculty life, I would also like to emphasize for a possible quiz. Um, as I mentioned before, we have an interdisciplinary perspective, which comes from collaboration, not only among the academic departments, but across the college. Also, continuous improvements. We've got collaboration, continuous improvement. Consistency for quality and excellence. We have our real learn platform that we use for all of our online courses with some standardization so that students can feel comfortable going from one course to another, knowing that the structure is similar 
and we also try to be consistent as much as possible with our policies and procedures. And the fourth and perhaps most important, our commitment to student learning and success, which we all share, right? So what's the most important C, do we think? Commitment to student learning and success. Like when I answer my own questions, um, what do faculty chairs do? Well, we teach. That's what we are, we're faculty members. But in addition to teaching, we also provide instructional leadership. We actually have more than 600 online courses. How many did I say? More than? 600. Um, we deal with the textbook customization and selection, and we work with the bookstore very closely to make sure that the materials are available to our students. Um, and we work very closely with faculty services as well. And we supervise, evaluate, and support over how many adjunct faculty members? 1,400. We establish departmental policies and procedures, typically collaboratively. If I'm thinking about doing something that I think will help my students in languages, I'll meet with my faculty colleagues to see if it's something that we might want to share across all disciplines. And probably the, the one piece of the puzzle that we spend the most time on, responding to student and adjunct faculty issues and concerns. They're not always bad things. Very often they're good things. Our students and our adjuncts come to us with wonderful ideas to help us improve the program. Um, so that, that is basically what we do as faculty chairs. We're also involved with college level programs, initiatives and service, shared governance, accreditation. We just went through our successful reaccreditation and the faculty were very involved in that entire process. Um, assessment, dual enrollment, and our sustainability work here at the college. And as I mentioned before, we have counseling and library services. So those are not only faculty roles in instruction, but actually working with students one-on-one -on -one when they need library assistance and counseling assistance. We support adjunct faculty level at the college. We have all faculty meetings twice a year, a big one in the fall and a big one in the spring. My favorite event of the entire year, though the one that we just had in the spring will be the last one that I was faculty senate president for. So. At one of those big meetings is the one that I said I was college president with Dr. Bustamante sitting right there in the front row. So <laughs> there you go. Promoted myself on the podium. Um, we also offer new adjunct faculty online orientations and in-person workshops. Um, we do a lot of things at the department program level. Um, like I said before, typically collaboratively so that we can share a lot of the best practices across the disciplines. Oh, and since I'm not very good at reading instructions, I had prepared the PowerPoint quite a while ago when I first got the invitation to come to new uh, employee orientation, doing the how we serve presentation. So I didn't read all the requirements. And so yesterday I was reviewing it all before I sent the PowerPoint over and I saw I was supposed to send, put in something about customer astonishment. And I'll tell you, this is the absolute truth. I'm not even making this up. I had just gotten an email from one of my um, Chinese professors who sent me this from one of her students. And so I thought it was just awesome that that was something I could toss in here that was very timely and helped me out with the fact that I didn't read instructions in a timely manner. <laughs> so um, in the languages department, we offer Chinese, Japanese, Arabic, Spanish, French, German, sign language, linguistics, Arabic humanities, and Spanish humanities. So this is from one of my Chinese professors. Professor Wang, thank you very much. Thanks to your letter, C-I-E-E. -E. And because I didn't do this when I should have done a couple weeks ago, I didn't have time to look up C-I-E-E. -E. Nevertheless, um, they offered the student $1,000 in scholarships to fund studying abroad in Shanghai. How awesome is this? This is not a native speaking Chinese student. This is a student here that's studying Chinese as a second language. And I just thought that was absolutely astonishing that you could do work at the community college level in languages. And we only go up to the 202 level. These are not graduate students. And this student was able to get a scholarship to study in Shanghai because of the individualized attention she got from her Spanish, or 
Spanish, that would be me, her Chinese instructor. Um, so I just thought that was a really wonderful example of something that was astonishing that you don't hear as much about. Typically, when we hear about issues, it's problems that we need to solve. So I just thought this was wonderful. Now, let's take a quiz. I hope you have been sufficiently prepared for our faculty How We Serve quiz. How many residential faculty members does Rio currently have? 22. There will be 23 as we are adding a chair for communications in the fall. So we will have one more. And I hope I'll remember to update my PowerPoint this time before I do it again. How many adjunct faculty? Over 1,400. I mean, think about that math. Over 1,400 adjunct faculty members for 22 chairs. Yep. That's a lot. How many online courses do we offer? Over 600, and it's growing constantly. And what are the four C's of real faculty life? Collaboration. Consistency. Continuous improvement. Thank you. And the one that I think is most important? Commitment to student success. Any questions? I did it in 10 minutes. For me, that's quite an accomplishment. And I didn't move too much. No questions at all? That's what I'm best at. Questions, ad-libbing. When I have a script, it's really hard. Nothing? Well, thank you so much for having me here. And welcome to the Rio family. Thank you, Angela.